Hello and welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be talking about ease. So when we drafted these blocks, we did not add ease because I feel it's easier to learn if there's no ease and that extra calculation. But before we start that, what is ease? Ease is generally a measurement you add or remove to your pattern to acquire a particular fit or style. So you have two kinds of ease. You have design ease and wearing ease. So wearing ease is just the normal amount of ease you need in your outfits to make your outfits fit properly and so you can move and sit and put your arms up. Design ease on the other hand is ease you add or remove to a style or a pattern just to get a particular look or fashion or design or whatnot. So this could be like the difference between a shift dress and a bodysuit or an overcoat. So an overcoat will have a lot more ease because it's big and loose. Uh, and a shift dress will have a little ease and a bodysuit might even have negative ease. So that is ease. Right, so as I said, we didn't add ease to these blocks. So the whole point of this video today is I want to show you how you can add or remove ease. Not just from your blocks, obviously from any pattern you're making because it's the same technique. So for instance, I have a basic skirt block here. If I wanted to say make a pencil skirt with this block, as it is now, it's going to be tight or too fitted because there was no ease. I'm going to have to add ease somewhere for us to be able to sit and move comfortably and get the right size or silhouette. How much ease you add really depends on the style. Of course, the more you add, the bigger and looser it is. On average, for something that is close fitted to a body like a blouse or a pencil skirt, two to three inches is over the body measurement usually works. So for this skirt, for instance, if I wanted to make a if I wanted to make a pencil skirt and I wanted to add ease, first thing I'm going to do is trace my pattern. So I have this traced out. For a skirt, for instance, we would actually want to add ease in two main places, usually the waist and the hip. Now, these adjustments I'm talking about are very rudimentary. So for the waist, for instance, if I wanted to add ease, I might just side on a slight amount of ease, like half an inch. And then for the hip, maybe two inches. Just a slight amount. Sometimes you don't even need ease at the waist, especially with like a pencil skirt. So maybe I'll only add ease at the hip and maybe I would take this down by maybe two inches or let's say maybe four inches on this side just to give it shape. So it's different areas. So for instance, I said I want to do half an inch at the waist. What does that mean? How do you remove it? This is a quarter of your body. This is a quarter of your body. So it's four pieces. So this has to be divided by four. So a quarter, um, half an inch divided by four is one over eight inches. Or 1.2 cm divided by four is three millimeters. So that's that. Same thing for here. Two inches divided by four is half an inch or five cm divided by four, it gives us about 1.2 cm. So you divide that. So now I know that here I have to add one eighth of an inch, and here I have to add half an inch to get the ease I want. So you only have to go, what I do, I follow my original waist measurement, like so. Now depending, you can go straight out. Now this is our original waist. 
before I did any shaping, straight out like that. And I added, I can just add it, but there's no need to be that complicated. I'm just going to follow the waist as it is, spool the curve I have there, add an eighth of an inch on that side, follow the curve I have here, an eighth of an inch. That is just a small margin, I'm not being too particular. If it was a bigger measurement, I would draw a straight line first before I measure the eighth of an inch, just to make sure that the waist doesn't keep on going up. We don't want that. Then at the hip, we've agreed that we're adding half an inch. So I would just, at that hip, I add half an inch on this side for the front, and then add half an inch on this side for the back. So I now have my new points here. I'm going to extend this hip line. I'm going to extend this hip line. And then I'm going to extend my waist. And I'm going to extend my waist. So basically I have added the eaves. And then I can go ahead and connect. Go ahead and connect from here. Here, it's now a bit wider, and from here, to here, it's now wider. Now going downwards, I can simply go straight down if that's what I want, or in this case, I wanted to take out four inches to taper the skirt. So four divided by four equals one so i'm removing one inch from either side and this one now i'm removing i'm taking away ease not adding so one inch inwards minus one inch and one inch inwards so now my skirt is going to go inwards the thing with the skirt you don't want to just go at a sharp point because that'll be too sharp you want to gradually, so what I would do, I would put a line straight down first, about halfway, another line straight down first, like so, just like a guideline, because you don't want to go too sharp. So I will put that line before I taper. A good way is to use a curved ruler like a hip curve, if you have a hip curve, you connect. So I'm not going to start right at a very sharp point. I'm just going to make sure it tapers from here, like so. And it tapers. From here. Like so. So. It's a gradual taper. You, you don't want to just go very, very sharp. So, I have my new skirt angle. And then you soften the lines because you don't want it to be too. This is where I'm going to soften the line. You don't want it to be too sharp. Like so. So here we've removed ease, and here we've added ease, and here we've added ease. So that is just a very simple way to deal with ease. We've added, we've removed. Now, concerning the darts, it doesn't really matter. The darts depend on the style of the skirt. It could be where they are, maybe you move them in or out. That is more of a styling choice and not really about ease at this moment, okay? Now, so this is just an example of an idea. Here we took, we added ease. You can go the opposite direction. We could go from inside the skirt and remove ease. Maybe I want to remove the same thing at the waist. Maybe remove the same thing at the hip. It's the same thing, you just go the opposite direction. So instead of outside, we're going inside. And then here, I tapered the skirt because I wanted a pencil skirt. Maybe you want a straight skirt, so you don't have to taper it. From the hip line, 
you simply go straight down and you have a new skirt so the same thing here I can simply go straight down and so here I have removed these I took I removed some of these so that's another thing so that's the opposite direction you're removing ease there are several points where you can add or remove ease in a bodice or a shirt or whatnot let's start from the top and walk our way around first place is the neck right now this neck is very high this stops at your natural neckline the highest point of your neck and this stops right at the highest point of your shoulder at least if you did it properly obviously that's quite fitted but depending on the style maybe you want the neck to go down or you want the neck to go out so for the neck in terms of up and down i can just decide i want to add a little ease and take it down by half an inch that's it i just decide i want to lower it down by half an inch and then i draw the line then apart from lowering it i might decide i want to open up the neck now here there are two things you can just measure along the shoulder and open it up maybe i want to open it up by half an inch i measure half an inch on the shoulder mark and draw or if it's just a little bit of ease i sometimes prefer to extend the shoulder just a little that's from the point of the high neck just draw a straight line a little before i measure now this is more of styling issues you have to test which one is going to work for your pattern but ideally you can just measure off the shoulder pick where you want to widen it and draw in your new neckline so if i've done this i can just decide to draw in my new neckline like this and i have essentially widened the neck next and the other place we like to adjust is the shoulder sometimes you want to widen the shoulder and all that now i always say do the neck before you do the shoulder because they interact so they have an idea so in this case i've widened my neck my shoulder stops where my natural shoulder bone stops i can leave it at this there's no need to touch it but if for some reason you wanted a wider shoulder depending on the style of what you're making you want to now this you're going to what i like to do let's use a longer ruler i'm going to draw a straight line from my shoulder point okay that's my shoulder i'm going to draw a straight line i just make sure my ruler is squared with my center front straight and i just draw a short guideline just a short guideline from the shoulder this is to prevent you from because if i elongate my shoulder and i keep on going down you can see the slope keeps on going down well, here we want to kind of maintain our shoulder slope so that if i extend my shoulder it doesn't dip down too much so maybe i want to add a quarter of an inch extra because of the style i'm making is looser i'll measure from here and add a quarter of an inch and then i will draw my new shoulder you can draw it from the original neck point or from the new neck point it depends on where your neck point is it doesn't matter so if this is my new neck point i'm going to just connect from here to here and now i have a new shoulder my shoulder is wider so remember always think of where your neck is or think of where how your shoulder is you don't have to adjust everything so that's shoulder another thing we have to think of is chest this stops at your natural chest and starts your armhole usually you don't really have to worry about the chest but if you're making everything a little wider like now i have a wider shoulder you might want to widen the chest a bit all this is to create a looser fitting garment so same thing at the chest line i might just decide to add a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch it depends let's say an eighth of an inch i just add a little there and that's it i am going to connect my new shoulder or my old 
want you to just connect my shoulder to my chest and I've widened the chest. Next, if we go down to the armhole. The armhole, as always, you can leave it as is, depending on what you want, but you can also take it down or take it up. Remember, all those points can be taken in or out. If you want to do the opposite, if I want to tighten the neck, I'll go in. If I want to tighten the shoulder, I'll go in. If I want to tighten the chest, I'll go in. So for the armhole, tighten, if I want to add ease, I'll simply go down. So I can just decide to go down by a quarter of an inch. So I've gone down. And if I go down, I'm just going to redraw my armhole from my chest line to my new armhole. Find a balance and you draw. So the armhole has come down. You've made it bigger. The same thing. From here, we can just continue the side. But if we're making the side wider, that is also another thing. Now, the specifics of these calculations, I'll refer you to the website where you can see how I made calculations, but it is, they are all variables. It depends on how big or small you're going. So for the side, if I want to go wide, it's the same thing I did with the skirt. I can just decide to add, maybe I want two inches. Half an inch. And from this point, I add half an inch. So we have half an inch, half an inch. So that's half an inch wider, and you join half an inch, half an inch. So I've added half an inch to my chest and bust. I've added half an inch to my waist. Simple, and it's all. You've just made everything bigger and wider. Now, what if I wanted the waist to be less of this? Instead of two inches ease at the waist, maybe I wanted one inch. I can simply put one divided by four is a quarter. I could have put one eighth here. So instead of half there, the waist maybe was less. It could actually go down like this. So that's the difference. You can remove this ease from here. You can even remove it from the dart. So instead of removing the, making here one inch, I could have left it as two inches. I removed a little from the inner dart leg. So maybe I'd have removed a quarter of an inch from here. And then the dart would be smaller and overall this would be bigger. So these are just places you can remove or add ease. It's not exact like oh it has to be that just places so the same thing with the back the same thing at the neck at the shoulder at the arm at the underarm at the chest at the waist even here you can move from all those points now with the back because there's a shoulder dart always remember whatever i do here i'll do here here already has a shoulder dart which has made this longer. I will simply cross check my measurement here and make sure it matches here. For instance, I moved here by a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to do the same thing. The neck has to match. My back neck, I moved it by a quarter of an inch to match this one. No problem. The shoulder, I will cross check. I'll cross check the measurement for my shoulder, which is two and Two quarters. I will measure the same thing here. And that's it. I can remove it from there. The shoulder dart is already there. There's no need. I'll simply remove it from there and join my armhole. And then I eliminate the dart. Maybe I won't sew in the darts. I don't need a dart because I've added ease. So, but if you need the dart, remember to take it into calculation. The arm, the neck hole goes here. Maybe I dropped here lower. I widened here. The same thing. Arm hole, you can go out. You can join this two. You go out. The back is fairly wide. Maybe you don't need to. Arm hole here, you can 
adjust out you can adjust out you can adjust out and go down the same thing and here too if you wanted to do it from here or you wanted to do it from here and go down is the same thing so you have to just note these areas now for the sleeve I did it with the sleeve we already had an inch ease in the bicep the same thing with the trousers which is why I'm not really going to explain how to add ease to your trousers at this moment but for now I just want to quickly say that with the sleeve and our tracer you just have to widen we already put um, one inch ease or two inches at the time we drafted this, so there is some ease so that you can put your arm in. And it's the same reason we put ease in the trousers, because without the ease, you won't be able to get into it. Similarly, with the trouser, we had added ease. There's ease in the hips, there's ease in the hips, there's ease in the legs. We simply accounted for that. We didn't make it too skinny so that you can easily get into it. So that's why I'm not covering ease in this video. But for the sleeve, I just want to point out that if you wanted to make it wider or smaller, you really start with your bicep. Always remember the sleeve is a tube. It's going to be sewn like this, you know. It's going to come together like a tube. So you really can't go too tight except you're using stretch fabric. Your arm has to be able to go inside, so always keep that in mind. So if you wanted to make the sleeve bigger or smaller, it will be at the bicep line. For starters, that's the first protocol. You extend the bicep line and make it wider or make it smaller. So either in or out. So you can go in or out. Then the wrist, this is also a style thing. If it's a bigger wrist, you go out like so. If it's a smaller wrist, you go in. Depends on the style of your outfit. And when you're done, you join. your new lines and through your sleeve so you can join if it's in or out like here i can go in when you're done you join your lines so but it should be the same thing if you're going out you go out on both sides if you're going in you go in on both sides why to maintain the balance of your front and your back now if you want to adjust front separate back separate all those type of things be careful and cross check your measurements now for the cap once again, there's ease involved. Once you've done this, when you redraw your cap, the amount of ease included starts shifting. The same thing with the cap height. But we'll address the issue of how to properly adjust your cap height in another video. But now that I've changed the ease, if I've moved the ease from here, this automatically changes. If I've changed the ease from here, this automatically changes so that affects the cap the cap height itself as i said in another video the sleeve length is also a different thing if you have a short sleeve here this is where you do your sleeve angle and then maybe connect or connect that's the different sleeve altogether and that you drew it on its own so the sleeve is more of a as you need basis. You don't just adjust the ease of your sleeve just because. So for your basic block, there's no need to worry about your sleeve as yet. When you want to use it for a project, you do all the corrections to it for that particular project. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've understood the concept of ease, taking things in, taking things out, and just adding ease overall if you need it. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. For every project you do, you're going to have a different ease use it's not the same thing for every project sometimes you need more and sometimes you need less and then you adjust accordingly so please refer because this is a bit more technical please refer to the article linked below where you can really see how i did certain calculations to help you along i just wanted to illustrate a good and simple way of adding and removing ease so thank you for watching bye